right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Vertical Presents webinar program. Um, Vertical Pre Presents is a monthly webinar program that delivers webinars that are informative in nature. They're designed to help you learn more about the many facets of communications and to really provide any information that you need to help grow your knowledge. Um, you can see what webinars are coming up by visiting vertical.com, and then you can navigate to the Vertical Presents page via our homepage. This month's webinar is on the top five steps for a successful phone system implementation. It's presented by Vertical's Vice President of Solution Engineering, Tim Larson. During the webinar, please keep your phone on mute for the entirety of the session. If you do have a question during the webinar, enter it into the chat function via the message icon on the lower left-hand side of the 8x8 meeting room. At the end of the webinar, Tim will open it up for questions and we'll answer everything that comes in through that chat. You can also always email follow-up questions to vmarketing at vertical.com. Today's webinar will be recorded, and we'll send out a link to the recording tomorrow so you can review sections or share the webinar with your colleagues. You can also access it by visiting that same Vertical Presents homepage. So just one more final reminder to stay on mute, and that's all I have. Tim, it's all yours. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, today we're going to talk about the steps to success for a successful phone implementation. Uh, my background here, I've been here 21 years. I'm the Vice President of Solutions Engineering, and we've seen everything as far as a successful or a not successful phone implementation. We're here to talk to, today about how to make it really, really successful uh, for you. So the agenda for today, we're going to talk about professional project management. We're going to talk about implementation plans. We're going to talk about a support methodology. And then I'm going to share with you how vertical difference makes all that come together. So first and foremost, professional project management. I like to say professional project management matters. It's the key to making sure that you, the customer and the provider are aligned on what we're going to provide. The scope of work matters. The pro professionalism in that scope of work matters. So let's talk about what that entails. Professional project management is, is a blend of four things. It's clearly understanding the scope of the project. It's truly understanding the time requirements. It's a knowledge of what might happen, the unexpected. And Murphy lives in our business, and that's what we know. Uh, and an unsurpassed knowledge of network topology. So professional project management, not just project management, really matters when it comes to getting a project right. Let's talk about how that works. Hey, Tim. Crafting I'm and sorry. adhering. Yes. Tim, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm not seeing any, um, any slides move. Can you switch maybe from one side to the other? Sorry, one more time, Rebecca. I'm not seeing any of your slides move. I'm still on the main page. Oh, okay. I'll reshare. Hold on. Thank you for the interruption. Okay, there we go. We're back with you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, so we were talking about the power of professional project management, and I was going to take a step through what that entails. Uh, creating and, and, and abiding by a project plan is the key to professional project management. We, we perform this function by creating a kickoff meeting. We create, we write, and get sign-off on a scope of work document. We have a scope of work straw man meeting where we walk through that and we understand the components and we make sure we build the timelines appropriately. We align the scope of work with timeline milestones so that we're hitting each of our project milestones as we go. We're scheduling the technicians in advance and making sure that they have the available bandwidth, resources, and the, the right tools with them when they go to the job. We perform a kickoff meeting and we start the work. But we're in clear and constant communication with everybody on the project, the, from the professional project manager to the solutions engineer to the customer's liaison to the technician. Uh, we're all in sync, all in flow. And that's one of the real keys to this. Step seven is probably the most important step in this because all through the process, clear and consistent communication is the key to success. And we like step eight because at the end, when you get it right, you can have a party. You can really enjoy success. When, at the end, when you get it wrong, you don't have a party and you don't enjoy success. So we always want to have that professional project plan. We want to have a plan. We want to execute to that plan. And we want to have a party at the end for success. 
Let's talk about a professionally planned implementation. Uh, this is just as important as the project management, but this is where we come in and shine. The professionally planned and executed implementation will save you money, will make you money, versus a poorly planned ex and executed implementation or a no plan execution really costs. So again, what are the components that go into making sure that is successful? One, we have an overall design and configuration. We sit down, we write that out with the customer, we make sure that that is uh, the appropriate config, the design, that everybody agrees and we sign off on that. We then look at the network topology and we make sure that it is consistent and reliable for voice communications. We do a network test and a network assessment and make sure that that's the case, not just on one day, but over a course of many days to make sure that your internet, your network topology is certified for a voice implementation and will be successful. We then do site surveys and physical implementation plans, the, the, the importance of a physical installation plan, noting all of the locations that you need to install phones, all of the locations where you have door boxes, all the locations where you have paging, all of those things are really crucially important and must be written down, must be in the scope of work, must have a plan. And then the most important piece I find is the training plan. Uh, getting the end users to adopt the actual implementation. You can install all the cool technology you want, but if the end user doesn't adopt it or adopt it well, then it was not a successful implementation. And so planning the training, not just doing the training, but planning it, building the right materials, making sure that you're communicating properly to those employees, uh, to those customers, to make sure that they are getting it is really crucial. At the end of the day, at that success party, you want everybody to be happy, not floundering around wondering how to use it. You're looking out for those implementation gotchas. This is a really critical step to make sure that you have a professional project manager, somebody who's seen and done this a ton of times because they know what the gotchas are going to be. They know where Murphy is hiding around the corner, and they're going to guide you around that. And then, God forbid something bad happens, you've got to have a back out plan. Uh, it's important to know where you're going to go back to, how you're going to put the customer back in service, up and running, if something catastrophic happens. Again, you don't plan for catastrophe, but you plan to ensure that when a catastrophe happens, you have a mitigation strategy. So once you've done a, a, a good implementation, a professional implementation, you've planned it, you've documented it, you've executed it well, then you really need to be asking about what is the support methodology? And I call this support methodology slash end-to-end -end care because really a support methodology is end-to-end -end care of that customer. Again, with the same metrics, uh, a poorly planned install can cost you money. A poorly planned support program can also cost you money. And we want to make sure that you're getting timely service and support from a provider. That's a key step. If you don't, then it's going to cost you time and money. And that's not what, what providers should be doing. So let's determine what category you might fit in uh, from a customer standpoint, from a support standpoint. If you have a huge amount of business that happens over your phones, you're a call center, you're on the phone all day long, or you can't be down for more than five minutes, you are a tier one primary customer. You need tier one level of support, and you need to be asking the provider, what does that mean? What does tier one mean? If I can't be down for five minutes, what is your mitigation strategy to make sure that I don't? If you're a little less uh, reliant on the phones for your business, but you have, let's say, a customer support team or a tech support team or a customer service group, uh, you, your customers call you, they do business with you over the phone, but it's not a critical piece of your business. It's an important piece, but it's not a critical piece of your business. Maybe you can survive with your phones down for an hour. That would put you in a tier two category of support. You still need high-end professional support, but you may not need it as urgently. Your business may not be as dependent on the telephones. You still need a high quality of support there. So you want to ask, if I can't be down for more than an hour, what is your mitigation strategy? Or you might be in tier three, which is most of your, inter your communications are internal. You use the phones, but it's not your primary source of communication. You have a, an e-commerce site or something of the sort that drives your business. And if your phones are down for a whole day, it may not be a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal, but it's not as big a deal. You're not losing money coming through the door as opposed to if you were a tier one. 
So if you fall into tier three, it's still important to ask the questions that we're about to ask about how you're going to support us as a provider. So what should we be asking? We should be asking about the size of the support team. We should be asking about emergency support. We should be asking about their on-site and remote support options. We should be talking about escalation processes and service requests and how that happens. And we should be talking about service level agreements. How do you commit to me that you're going to meet my needs? So let's dive into each one of those real quick. So on number one, the size and the concentration of the support team. How many members are there? How are tickets prioritized? What's the average experience of the support team? Where is the support team located? Is it onshore or offshore? What hours are available to you? And what time zone are the support re representatives in? Those are all key criteria you should be asking your provider to make sure that you are getting the right kind of support. Number two, when there's an emergency, what is the SLA? Is there an SLA first and foremost, but what is it? How do I achieve that? What are the metrics that go into that? You gotta be asking those questions. Is there 24 by seven support? If I'm one of those tier one customers and I have an outage at two in the morning on Sunday, how are you gonna support me? That's a good question. How will your provider adhere to that SLA? What are the terms of that SLA? And what are the repercussions if they don't meet that SLA? Particularly important when you're having an emergency outage. Let's look at number three. Does your provider provide on-site support? More importantly, can they do remote support and achieve great success in delivering that high level of service remotely, as oftentimes that's faster and on-site is not needed. But you also need that on-site component when things go wrong and you need somebody on-site. So it's important to have a provider that provides both. And then number four, how do we open a ticket? How do we process the ticket? How do we define a service request? How do we make sure that things are being followed up on? How are things being escalated? Uh, the escalation process, does it extend to executive management or is it just within the support organization? These are all very critical questions to be asking as you're going in looking for a provider. And then number five, what are the SLAs? Uh, are the SLAs commit outlined? Are they, is there a timing for each type of service that they're providing? It's important to understand those and also understand how the provider will actually achieve those SLAs. So be, feel free to ask deep questions about SLAs and their adherence to that and what happens if they don't. So we've talked about defining the, the, the provider that you would like to do business with. And as Vertical, we achieve all of those things with excellence. This is one of the reasons we're providing this webinar is we believe that this is very important. And we're one of those providers that brings that to the table. We make your life easier on purpose. That's our job. We're not just here to deliver product or deliver services. We're here to take that burden off of the customer's IT team or off of the customer's service team. We use process-based techniques. We have standardized processes for the last 20, 30 years that we use day in and day out. We continue to refine those processes with lessons learned as we go through implementations and we find more things that we need to add to that plan. But having a checklist, having a process is key to being consistent in your delivery every time. And that's what we are. We are consistent in our excellent delivery every time. We're focused on remote support, but we're also that nationwide provider that can provide you that on-site, hands-on, give a damn. At the end of the day, we solve over 80% of our support tickets remotely, and that is time to service, important to the customer. We also build smart support contracts that allow the customer to get into the tier that they need to be at, to get the SLAs that they need for their business to make sure they're receiving the type of support that they need on an ongoing basis. And then we've taken the time over the past 20 years to hire the best of the best in the industry. Our staff is bar none, the most experienced, the most engaged, the most caring that we have seen in the industry. And we bring them together for 10 and 20 and 30 years people have been working here, making sure that things go right for our customers. Our process really starts with our solutions engineers. 
I'm very proud of this group. I run this group. But we have an average of 20 years of communication experience in the industry in each one of our solutions engineer. We have expert tailors that fit that solution to your needs. And, and their, their job is to make sure that you get what you paid for. You get the services and products the way you wanted it delivered. They are tied to your customer satisfaction at the end of the day. We engage the solutions engineer in every deal at the very beginning in the initial meeting. They are in every meeting subsequently. They write the scope of work. They manage the project managers as we go through the project. They manage the technicians as we go through the project. They make sure that we're delivering what we scoped, what we promised, and we're doing that at a high level of excellence. That is what an SE brings to the table. And they stay with the project from the very beginning to 90 days after the implementation to make sure that you are satisfied with your implementation. So we've talked about the implementation process. This is how Vertical does it. We do a project kickoff. We do a network assessment. We walk through the preparation phase to make sure that we're building that solution in conjunction with the customer, not in a silo. We do ongoing status updates. This is either daily or weekly or monthly, depending on the project. Uh, and as the project gets nearer term, we go into every day we're having a conversation with that customer about that project to make sure that we're on task. We then move into the installation phase, and we perform that high-quality implementation that I talked about, that pre-planned, success-driven, by-the-book implementation. We've written the book, therefore we execute on that plan, and we get a successful implementation. And then we allow for 90 days after that implementation for a success period. We want this to be successful. So we have an implementation assurance phase that lasts 90 days after the implementation to make sure you don't have any issues, you don't have any questions, the SE is still attached, the project manager is still attached, everybody is still uh, working on that project with you for 90 days to make sure that you are satisfied. Vertical also can provide professional services, and I've talked about some of the professional services that we provide in SKIN as part of every deal, that professional solutions engineering, that professional project management, uh, and then we have on-site training options and custom software dev if that's something that you need. And a lot of our customers like CVS and Macy's and others are taking advantage of all of these professional services that we provide. And as we transition from the implementation phase after 90 days of the assurance phase into the support phase, we have a full staff of 70 full-time operations that are there to support you, to make sure that you get what you need when you need it. Depending on what tier you are, what service agreement you provide on, you, you've agreed on, that's, these are the folks that are going to make sure that you get taken care of day in, day out, 24-7, 365. And we do like to talk a little bit about our awards. We provide exceptional service, and I can say that after being here for 21 years, but it's also nice to see that the industry says that we do that. We were one of the first 8x8 certified resale partners. We were awarded best practices for customer engagement and support by Frost & Sullivan, and we are one of Mitel's top 10 providers. We close 1,600 tickets a week. We do 160 new installs every month, and we have 974 combined years of experience. I told you we hire the best and we keep them a long time. These are the folks. They take good care of you. And I can say all that, but it's in, it, important to have industry analysis go out and do independent verification of that. And Eastern Management Group went out and did a survey of over 3,000 IT execs with companies that had 300 employees or more. This was not a pay-for-play award. This was one thing, This is something that they went out and did, and they just interviewed the IT folks and said, who do you like doing business with? Who is supporting you well? What products and services are you buying that you would tell somebody else about? And we came in number one in three categories, not just one, but in three categories. Number one in customer support, number one in reliability, and number one in contacts and for implementation. And that contact center implementation, those are the tough ones. Those are really complex, high-end, must be done well, and they lose money if you don't. So we're really proud of these three awards from Eastern Management Group. And again, I encourage you to click on the link there at No Jitter and look at this uh, independent study to make sure that you understand what a good provider should be doing and look at all the competitors that we beat out in these three categories. Again, I appreciate your time this morning, and uh, 
hope that you found this valuable. Rebecca, I'll turn it back over to you to open up for some questions. All right. Thanks, Tim. If anybody has any questions, please use the questions pane in the lower left-hand corner of the 8x8 meeting. You just have to click on that little message icon and a pane will open up. So we'll give you a quick second to enter in any questions you have. not seeing anything pop up immediately here. Um, Tim, thank you so much for your time. If anybody does have anything, pop it in now. If not, we will look for any of your questions in the email, in, uh, excuse me, in the VU Marketing email address. Um, and if not, then we can just close it up for the day. Uh, Tim, Tim, thank you so much for your time, and we'll talk to you later.